Hey, what up guys? Just before we get into the tutorial, this video is sponsored by Core Games. Core is a free to play gaming platform where you can play, but it's also a platform to create games as well. You don't need any coding to create beautiful 3D games like these, but if you can code, then even better. You can go deeper and bring to life your imagination. As you guys know, as someone that's been creating a lot of 2D games on this channel, I must say I'm genuinely impressed and amazed by what this platform can do. And just to paint a picture of possibilities, I'm going to show you a couple of things that's blowing my mind about this. As you can see, there's so many different modes that basically capture all the different types of games that we can have. So there's like first person, you know, third person, and there's top down versions as well. You can obviously just make an empty project from scratch. But then there's already these built in game modes like Battle Royale, Deathmatch, uh, CSGO type games, right? Like Last Man Standing. So this is quite, quite amazing. So it looks like this map has snow and then you can just drop in other textures like like a desert and what's great about this platform is other developers from the community can share what they've made and you can build on top of that as well if you like so for example if you just drag one in this is the map that someone made and the moment i saw this this is where my mind was blown you can pull a rock out and look at how the water behaves like the waterfall just automatically adjusts itself and this is quite next level in my opinion if this is something that interests you, they have a invitational game jam running through the month of August. So you can see here July 29th to August 30th. So this is the invitational that they're running, which I'll have as a first link in the description below. Applications close on the July 18th and looks like they have some cash prize and they even have a Tesla Model 3 as one of the prizes. So if anyone's interested, I highly recommend you guys join this competition. Me, myself, I will be joining it as well because I'm really blown away by what they're doing. So I'll see you guys at the competition. Use the second link in the description to download Core for free so you can start creating and publishing your own games. If you open up a brand new Flutter project, this is what you should see. Now under this main function, we're going to delete everything below it as we're going to create this game completely from scratch. Let's create a stateless widget called my app and inside let's return a material app. Now the first thing to do is to just check off some of these properties. So the first one I want to change is the debug banner, which is this banner in the top corner. And for the home, let's return something called home page, which we are about to create now. To keep our code clean and simple, let's create a new file called homepage.dart. Make sure to import the material.dart file as usual and return a stateful widget called homepage. And change this to scaffold. Now, if you come back to the main.dart file, you should see a red squiggly line under homepage. So click this little light bulb and import the new file that we just created. If we save this, we should just have a blank app. And this is where we're going to build the game. Now, the first thing to do is to create a column. And inside this column, let's put two expanded widgets. We'll make the top color blue and the bottom one brown. I actually want the top to be bigger than the bottom so let's specify the flex here to be 2 or 3 rather which just makes the top container 3 times as big as the bottom container. Now let's create our bird so in the child of the top container we're going to center a widget called a stack which uh, as the name implies it stacks multiple widgets on top of each other and since we're going to have the bird as well as um, barriers in this blue container a stack is the necessary widget to place these different elements together. So inside the stack, we are going to have a container whose child is another container, let's say with a width of 50 and a height of 50 and color, let's say yellow. Now, if we save this, it's just in the middle. So if you come to this container and specify an alignment, for example, say zero one, the way these numbers work is that there is an X value and a Y value. So for the X value, if you look at the horizontal axes, it's negative one on the left and positive one on the right. 
Same idea for the y. If you look at the vertical axes, it's negative 1 on the top and positive 1 on the bottom. So, for example, if we have, say, negative 1, negative 1, it should be on the top left corner. Now, for the Flappy Bird game, let's start in the middle. So, 0, 0. And what we want is for the bird to stay in the middle in terms of the horizontal axes, while the y coordinate is the one that changes up and down. So, we should make this a variable. So, I'm going to call this bird y, meaning the y coordinate of the bird. Let's come up to the top and create this variable. So double bird y is initially zero. Let's create a method while we're here called jump. To call this method, let's wrap the scaffold with a gesture detector. And if we hit tap, let's call the jump method. And what happens if in the jump method? Well, let's start a timer, which you will need to import. And for the duration, we'll set it to be 50 milliseconds and set the state to change the bird y to subtract 0.05. Now remember, since negative 1 is at the top and positive 1 is at the bottom, subtracting should mean the bird is moving upward. So let's save this and run it to test it out. Now if I tap the screen, it should just move upward, like so. Now obviously we don't want this to be continuously moving upward, we want it to eventually come, come back down like a jumping motion. But just before we continue on, let's add a bird image to replace this box. If we come over here, I've already got an image prepared, so if you download the code from my website then this image will be included in the folder, but otherwise you can find any image from Google. Just make sure it has a transparent background. So with this image, let's go into the library folder and create a new folder called images and place the file in this folder. Once you've done that, come back to our code and make sure to tell the project that we have just imported some images. So to do this, open up the pubspec.yaml file and scroll down a bit to find the assets section. And we're going to import library slash images slash. Sweet. So save that, and if we come back to our yellow box we just created, instead of returning this, let's return our image. So let's create a new file called bird.dart, import the material.dart file as usual, and create a stateless widget called mybird. Inside the container, let's return the image, and let's make the size of this container to be 50, just to see what it looks like. The other thing is the alignment, so let's create this final bird y and create the necessary constructor. Then we can set the alignment to be 0 and bird y. Okay, now we can get rid of this one and put in my bird. And there it is, tab to import. And inside the my bird, we should pass through the y coordinate. Cool, let's, so let's see how our bird looks. And awesome, there it is. Now for the jump, we want the motion to be a natural physical jump that is affected by gravity, right? And all, kind, all jumps of this kind are some type of an upside down parabola. So we're going to use a simple quadratic equation to model this jump. So if you really think about it, like if you jump or uh, even better, if you like think about chucking a ball to some direction, that shape it creates an arching parabola. And so if you look at the code that we currently have, we've set it so that the bird y in the timer just keeps incrementing up by the same number. Now the way anything jumps in the air and comes back down, just due to gravity, we never go linearly up to some point and then linearly come down like this. Rather, we have some smooth parabolic shape where we reach some maximum and then we eventually come back down. And so this is what a jump looks like if you kind of map it out over time. So we can get rid of the top one. So the equation of this parabola is what I'm after right now. So I'm just going to show you just a little bit of maths from just about like high school level um, to be able to derive this equation. Uh, if you're not interested in finding how to do this with the math, then of course you can just skip this section and just jump straight to the code and just copy my equation. But if you're someone that's interested in understanding the math behind it, then the ceiling of your creative capacity is quite high because you can approach a problem by sort of figuring it out from first principles. Elon Musk style. 
but beyond that i just think this shit's really cool so that's why i'm going to show you so this upside down parabola the first thing to think about is i'm going to use just a little bit of calculus and just start with the fact that we're all affected by the same force which is gravity everyone on this earth every object is getting pulled down to the center of the earth by this force and so the acceleration in terms of the y component so y meaning like the vertical height the acceleration of the y in the physical world is negative mg m standing for mass and g standing for gravity and so depending on the mass right like if you're heavier you will fall faster than someone that's lighter now the thing is just to keep it simple i'm just going to say m equals to one so the mass is just like one gram or you know one kilogram just one unit just to keep things nice and simple and from here let's integrate a couple times to get the y equation so y double dot i mean acceleration y dot i'm referring to velocity and so if i integrate with respect to time it's going to be negative gt plus some initial velocity and the velocity is just the strength of the jump initially so let's just label some stuff just to make it clear for for everyone this is gravity and this is just the velocity which is in other words the strength of the jump now let's integrate one last time so again with respect to t it's going to be minus gt squared over 2 plus vt now usually when you do this math you would have some initial height like if you're jumping from like a cliff or something but for us we'll just consider the initial position um, to be zero like where you are currently so this is the equation now we can substitute some values of our choice here so i'm going to say uh, let's say gravity is 9.8 because it actually is and for the velocity this is something that we can fine tune later on to fit on our screen but for now i'm going to say like like 30 meters per second which means if i sub these values into that y equation this is the one so this is the equation of a negative parabola that we're going to use in our code so the equation is height equals to negative 4.9 times t squared so time times time plus 30 multiplied by t we should create some variables up here for the bird so we're going to need initial position height as well as a time variable we can add more variables to fine tune the jump more precisely so this 4.9 at the front is actually coming from gravity and the 30 represents velocity in other words how strong the jump is let's add comments to make it clear what our code is doing so every 50 milliseconds this equation is going to calculate a new height and so we need to use a set state to update the bird's position so bird y is equal to initial position subtract the height again just to be clear and make sure we're all on the same page subtracting makes the bird go higher last thing is at the end of each iteration let's keep the time going cool so save and let's see how this works awesome and it comes back down like we wanted it to one mistake that we made is in the in the bird.dart file we shouldn't specify the size of the container but rather specify the size of the child cool now if we just print the y coordinate of the bird Let's just see how the numbers are working. Okay, cool. So now let's put in some conditions for when the bird dies. So check if the bird is dead. If bird y is less than negative one, then that means the bird is above the top of the screen. So if that happens, we will cancel the timer. Looks like the jump is too strong. Let's change the velocity to say five. Looks better, but still a bit too strong. Let's change it to 3.5. I'm going to take a quick moment to put your mind at ease. If you've noticed any lag when I'm demoing the game, it's because I'm screen recording at the same time as running the iOS simulator, which my old ass MacBook can't handle. I hope there's no production delay, by the way, and we get a refreshed lineup this year because I definitely need a new MacBook. So anyway, I'm recording on my phone. And just to show you the end result, it's really smooth and has no lag at all. So yeah, for the rest of the tutorial, if you see any bit of lag, don't worry about it. Just make sure it's working fine on your machine. One more condition to check other than if it's above the top of the screen is to check if it goes below the bottom of the screen. So let's add in another condition here. Check if bird Y is greater than one. We can now remove the print and I'm going to change this jump method to call it start game actually and we'll have another method called jump 
And if jump is pressed, then time equals to zero. So the reason for this is that we want to start a timer once at the beginning of the game. And every time after that, when the user taps the screen, all we need to do is reset the time variable back to zero. So the jump happens again. This calls for a Boolean variable called, let's call it game has started, which is initially false. Now, once the start game method has been called, then the Boolean game has started becomes true. So if we come down to our scaffold where we have the gesture detector, we can say, depending on the value of game has started, if it has, then jump. If it hasn't, then start game. So this is important because once the game has started and our timer has begun, we can just execute this jump function and set the state to reset the time back to zero. We should also say uh, initial position equals to bird y so that the next jump occurs from where it currently is. Let's decorate this up a bit. So in our stack, let's add some text that says tap to play and make the text white. And let's align this to be in the middle-ish. Size could be a bit bigger. Remember our game has started variable? Well, we can use that again here in our text widget. So if game has started, then display nothing. And if game hasn't started, then display tap to play. Now, one thing is when we check for if the bird is dead, I want to separate this out into its own method. So come down here and say bool bird is dead and paste our earlier condition in. And if the condition is met, then return true. In all other cases, return false. The reason why I wanted to add, uh, I wanted this as its own method is because later we also need to check for when the bird hits barriers. So this will keep our code nice and clean. And we can go back and say, if bird is dead, then cancel the timer. We should also change game has started back to false if this happens. And finally, show a dialog, dialog box when the user dies. For the dialog box, I'm just going to copy this in. I'm going to bring in two methods. One is called show dialog and the other is reset game. So once the user dies, show a dialog box that says game over and also provide a button so that the user can play again. To restart the game, there's also some variables that need to be changed back to its initial values. And that's what the method reset game is for. Now, the last detail to add to this game is the barriers as well as the barrier collision. Now, I'll just show you what to add in. So I've already created it up and just to save us time, you can pause the video if you like, but I'm just going to explain what we need for the barriers. First of all, just these variables. So barrier X, I'm going to use two barriers in two different positions and we're just going to loop them. You can of course add more barriers here if you like. And also we can control the barrier width. Now we said minus one here and positive one to the right, meaning in total, the distance from left to right is two, right? So that's what this out of two represents. So we can say the barrier width is 0 0.5, meaning it's just about a quarter of the screen. The last important detail of the barrier is the height of the barrier that you can control, right? So these are the different things that uh, you can customize and create the type of map that you want. But just to show you how, how these lists work is I have a list of another list of doubles. I wrote the comments here. So the first value is the top is the length of the top height. And the second one is the length of the bottom height. Again, same as the barrier width. All of these values are out of two. Now to implement the actual barrier, create a new file called barrier.dart and copy this code in. With this file, it's gonna require a few things that we created in the other homepage.dart file. So the width, the height, the X coordinate of the barrier and also just a Boolean saying, is this the bottom barrier or not? Because if it is, if it 
is the bottom barrier, then it's going to be aligned at 1. Whereas if it's not the bottom barrier, it's going to be aligned at negative 1. Okay, so just little details like that. All of these widths and height, I did it in terms of not specifying a fixed value, but rather doing it as a proportion of the entire width of the screen or the entire height of the screen. So hopefully you're familiar with this code here. I've used it in my other videos and it's pretty popular in general. So the media query getting the size and width of the actual screen. And then I like to multiply that number by the proportion that I like. So the width out of two. So remember two I explained earlier is the entire width since it goes from minus one to one. I find it using proportions to be nice and clean in my in my code rather than specifying a fixed value. The other thing I changed is in the bird, I specified a bird width and a bird height because when we need to detect the barrier collision, it's not enough to look at only the coordinate of the bird because the bird occupies more than one coordinate. It occupies a small portion of space, right? So that's why we need to specify a bird width and height. If we come down to our stack, so I mentioned we're going to use two pairs of barriers and just cycle through them. And hopefully once you get this basic idea, then you can just add as many barriers as you like. But yeah, I try to make it as clear as I can. So here are the four different objects. So the top and bottom barriers of the two X coordinates. And the last final bit of information that we need is the barrier collision, which I simplified it down to just these few lines of code. So it's just one big for loop. And basically what it's doing is it's checking the X and Y coordinates of the barriers. So using a bunch of inequalities, we can check if the bird is in the wrong location, like if it's in a barriered location or not. So in the if condition, uh, if you take a look at it, there's actually three statements to, like three conditions to check. So two of them are the X coordinates. So these are checking the X coordinates. And this last one is checking for the Y coordinates. And inside the third one, it also checks for both the top barrier as well as the bottom barrier. So all of this code together just uh, neatly we'll check if it's going to hit some of the barriers. Please take the time and have a look at this code to see how it works. And if you have any questions, then let me know and I'll try to explain it. But other than that, this is the final result. And it's crazy to think that such a simple game could blow up the way it did in its time. But um, with that being said, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll be back next week with another creation. Latest.